personally <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, we get started. Just discussion. Oh, okay. Um, unlike, unlike every other meeting, I don't really have an agenda tonight. But I distributed or we, we pre-thought or anything like that. Um, I, I just want to use tonight as sort of a night to reflect a little bit on everything we've heard. Um, when you think back over the last month and a half, two months, it's been that long almost. I think, and, and we'll be coming up pretty soon here, I think, on reaching some, some conclusions. Um, we met with the community folk. Um, we met with folks and organizations that have a role in downtown Elliott City. Sorry, Gary, I said it again. Uh, the historic district. Um, we met with entities that are in and around the county that play a role in redevelopment, revitalization. We talked to a CDC, um, sort of a, a mothership of CDC, sort of an overseer of CDCs last week. Uh, a great presentation, discussion, robust, uh, and much needed to help give some clarity. And tonight, I thought maybe it'd be good if we could just frame some of the things we're thinking about. And Shane has conveniently placed some pieces of paper on them. I'm not sure how they're up there because it's really magic to me that they sit up there and so well. Um, tape or It's the thumbtacks. There you go. I heard it. <laughs> but maybe, Shane, you can help maybe describe, you know, what you think we ought to do tonight with respect to identifying and all of us reflecting, not just one person speaking, but all of us kind of putting things up about what we've learned thus far, which I think is the purpose of tonight. Mm -hmm. And so we have some basis upon which to then move into what, what are we going to do, right. which I think is the long-awaited and much-anticipated question, which next week we will be able to address. Jane, you want to share some thoughts about how you might curate tonight's discussion? Sure. Uh, so this is an exercise that I made up, so I hope, hope it's useful for all of you. Um, and basically, like, like Mike said, we're just trying to organize our thoughts regarding all the things that we've heard over the past several weeks. So basically what we're going to be doing is you all have, um, while well, you're sharing sticky notes in front of you, and sorry, 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 if you're not in the way, um, we're going to be talking about needs and roles. So these two sheets of paper here. our current and future needs of Elliott City and the West End. And some of the needs are going to be individual to each area and some are going to be shared. So I'd like everyone to take maybe 10-ish minutes, if you need more that's fine, and use your stickies and write down future and current needs of Elliott City and the West End or both and stick them up where they belong. as you want. Yeah, you're not limited to one.
five more minutes. was uh, $3.2 million in capital in capital dollars for Ellicott City, and then there was an $8 million program over three years that was approved for flood mitigation grants for the entire state. So Ellicott City is eligible to apply for a portion of the approximately two and a half-ish million a year, but that wasn't awarded to Ellicott City. It was just the 3.2 that was awarded to Ellicott City. We're very grateful to Delegate Courtney Watson and our partners in Annapolis for that. But can we sue the newspaper for the false <laughs> <laughs> Is that fake news? Sorry, I mean, yeah. yeah. Does that qualify as a fake news? <laughs> that is, that is fact, fake news. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. 
Okay, so we're gonna read through what everyone put up here, and then we're gonna add um, we're gonna add a section over here that's just general government, which I neglected to put up. So basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to map all of these needs to organizations. So we have EDA, we have the LGBT partnership over here, government generally, and then unmet or a role that a future organization can play. So as we're going through these, I am going to take duplicates down so that we don't have any of those. So the first one we have here, access to services. Um, government. Trusted representation in law enforcement and public agencies. From government. government. Community support. All of those. Yeah, I'm, I'm that future. Community support. Hmm? Might be I'm that future or community support because it doesn't exist now. Maybe in the. In the so this this there. should be future. Well, no, no I'm that no, future I'm that organization. Oh, yeah. Okay. Development of the resident stories to better leverage and money and assistance. Probably. Yeah. Okay. It says lack of oversight. Who is in charge? I'm going to ask a strange question about that one because if they're saying lack of oversight, who's in charge? Are they indicating that it's already a governmental problem or that the government should fix the problem? It's a good question. I wrote it and my my feeling and concern was I don't know who is. In I, I, I would say I want to put that under a, a, an unknown identity then because if we don't know who it is right now, then it's an unknown. I agree. Flooding again. So is this a need? We don't need no. more flooding, right? No. So we're going to set this one aside. Community consensus, burnout and distrust. So again, is this a need? Could consensus is. is and I would put that under on that future. Implementation of watershed plan and enforcement of storm stormwater BMPs. Better utilization of our historic sites. I'm at, I'm at future. More visitors, more spending by visitors. I would put that under ECP. ECP, yeah. And it straddles ECP and economic development. We'll put it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Grants and low interest loans. I met future organization. Just well, right. I, I think that's complicated because they're coming from the government right now. So they exist someplace. But is that from our local government or from our federal government? They're coming from all three. What we get is it is it active now? Is it existence now? Is it something that's that someone can apply for and get right now? I have from all three levels of government twice in two, three years. So did you go through ECP? You no. cannot develop it, you went straight through the government. Yourself. Yeah. Okay. And they were all government programs. Yes. Okay. So okay. Government. Like government. government. Okay. I mean, I don't care if it's both. I just don't think it's. I don't think it's unmet because I, because if there are some of those. No, clearly it's, it's, it's not unmet. The question is who's who's asking, right? Is it accessible? Is who's right. taking care of it on a local level? It's clearly yourself. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is four of them. So flood mitigation, safety, more parking, more visitors. True. You might yeah. have to rip that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here, yeah, here, you want me to all write it. Okay, we'll move past that one. Sorry. 
ECP with proper funding plan for vacant property. So let's split this one up too. Capacity to leverage world-class expertise to elevate OEC to a place worthy of all Howard County residents. <laughs> Number two, ability, ability to leverage technical assistance and resource dollars from beyond Howard County, donor, state, fed, to attract world-class resources. Sorry, Andy, you should have volunteered for this job. It's all good. Okay. So now we have more visitors. This is a <laughs> I'm just crossing out the parking because that was a multiple post it. <laughs> parking. <laughs> government. 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 <laughs> Yeah, government. Yeah, government. Yeah, government. Yeah, yeah. More parking. Better parking. Yeah. Better parking. Better parking. Is it planning for the parking? Is planning well, yeah. okay? How do you, how do you create, how do you create more parking? Like, it is unmanned, but how do you create more parking without someone taking ownership of that problem? Right. And so, 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 so it's unmanned. It's unmanned. Yeah. It's unmanned. So, it's unmanned. so it's unmanned. but it. It's unmanned. It's, it's we we've, we've created more parking. It could be either. It could be government. In 2003, I read 25 years of parking surveys for Ellicott City. 25 years they said we needed that parking structure on my Angie's place. Right, so who, who would do that? Well, that would have been government. Right. <laughs> so, so it could be like government or it could be so we're gonna need all, yeah. all the parking that we have in the district is municipal. Yeah, right. So, so but if it didn't happen, happen, if the problem wasn't addressed, it tells me that that's why I'm saying I, address it. I think it should be in so a maybe best future. I think it should be an unmet because it hasn't been addressed. Well, right. it's not, yeah, it hasn't been addressed yet, so it could be. A There's a history of the Restoration Foundation reading, discovering no, parking. Like sewer, sewer, water. Years ago. So it wasn't government. And there, there is yeah. some addressing parking in the master plan. Yeah, so it's probably local. I, I, I didn't well, do that. Well, they probably private. Yes, I know. There's a new parking So that's what it is. Why don't you want to be in the discussion also a little bit? Maybe you see Gail Ryan to go along with that, which actually, right, right. One thing we're talking about forever is we're talking about parking. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Okay, adequate housing. How would you say the future group? Housing, housing. housing. The future group. Uh, I think that's a tough one. Who could do it? Yeah. That's a tough one. I think well, yeah, it's, it's, a, a, it's a multi approach. I think you need an advocate for it. It's obviously policy driven, and there's by some economics required, so it's just not in a silo. Right. Well, I guess what, what's the intent of the need by the author of that? I mean, oh, that do, we, do, we, do we need more housing construction? Do we need more that housing availability? I, I will say that. this. It was only more than one post that, that came all my that. way. Put, put D, all of the above. All, 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 all of the above. Okay. I think so, it's the future because our, our so local government really that. isn't. It's on that. It's on that. Our government isn't in charge of developing right. new housing. They're in charge of approving new housing exactly. and helping to guide that. Charles, there is a community development I mean, aspect yeah. to county government that owns affordable housing and develops that housing too. Yeah. Downtown Lincoln City has a couple of you know, prime examples of that. Right. So yeah. there is a role for government, clearly. Well, maybe both. But it might be a hybrid between government and a new entity because right. no one's really advocating for it as passionately as maybe could, right? So I put under on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Better flood planning. Government. Government. Yeah. So this one I think is duplicative. It says proper funding. We kind of covered that okay. here in terms of leveraging resources and funding. Does everyone agree with that? Okay. Got one that wants to flood. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Oh, that's why I have the tea. Better 
infrastructure? Government. 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 Diversity of business. I would say both of you together. Yeah. 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 Plan for vacant properties. On that future organization. <laughs> Definitely on that future organization. Safety. Government. Flood mitigation. <laughs> it's duplicate, isn't it? Is it? I think it was already mentioned. We have it should be government. better flood planning. Yeah, I think it's government. Government, for sure. Public safety. Government. We have public safety. Yeah, we already have safety. Economic safety. Economic safety. I don't know if such a thing exists. Okay, so I, that's mine, and I'll explain it. So okay. I'll let you all choose where it goes. Um, one of the things that clearly safety is coming up a lot here, but there's a lot of people who are consider that to be just personal human safety, where I'm saying that we need economic safety because if our town continues to flood, but people are safe, that that's what we need. We absolutely need that. But if our businesses aren't safe, then the long-term death of the city is inevitable. Just, so to, just to counter that, a business cannot be safe because there's a risk of doing business. Maybe nobody wants to eat escargot anymore, and they don't want to come to Jersey Hills from to come to your restaurant. That's a, that's a risk. But you need a safe environment to conduct business in. I'm not sure that's economic. Economic stability, maybe? No, no, it's economic safety. I mean, if businesses aren't you wouldn't want to open a business in a war zone. So you're talking I about insurability? Not in general. Not in general. <laughs> a, a safe, a, an environment that's safe for businesses to move into. Right now, we've got a flood-stricken district that's not really safe for a business to move into. So where would you put metros? I would put that under an unknown entity. I'll just say it is a level of confidence, comfort business in the city. I mean, that kind of covers both safety and economic. It yeah. needs to be a comfort level Absolutely. In, in activities in the city. Um, and I think that's something that comes out of the unknown. It has to be. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Diverse representation. The author want to explain? Is it on the governmental level or is it Rep yeah. Representation in terms of say what it says again. Diverse representation. Oh, I'll speak I, to know it. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking of like representation for diversity for like diverse groups. I was thinking specifically so it applied to West End initially. I was thinking that I could go across the board, but I was thinking about um, when Beth Woodruff was here and her talking about the needs of her community and how diverse they were and people just being able to feel like they were represented. Unmet. Yeah, yeah, unmet. unmet. Oh, show up. Renovation. Is this the buildings? Should I the buildings? So I think we already had plan for the buildings somewhere, right? Plan for vacant properties. Vacant, but that's different. Not necessarily vacant. They could be actually housed. Vacant would be those ones that need to be taken possession of and then renovated. This is like strictly supportive of the renovation of whatever existing buildings are, especially in light of like whatever we're doing. Yeah, that would be a future organization. Future organization. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like that little house in the corner? I think it goes in. Unmet. Unmet, yes. Yeah. These are both funding related, financial assistance and reliable, sustainable funding, duplicative. Say it again, sure. This ah. one is financial assistance. This one is reliable, sustainable funding. I'm going to put my three cents in for the financial assistance piece because I was really thinking from a government perspective. So this one is grants and low interest loans. Mm, no, this is more like both for, uh, I don't know, 
possibly was. I guess maybe it probably should have been in the WEP, but I was thinking like for those people who find themselves under financial hardship because maybe they lost jobs because their job was compromised or an OEC and, or some sort of health care or whatever financial assistance is that. So where are they still? Uh, reliable, sustainable funding. So I, I wrote that. I'm pretty sure that's my hand, my actual note that I made myself. Um, <laughs> thank you for <laughs> that a lot. Um, and I think it's, I think it's a combination of government and NutMed because we're, I mean, we're experiencing right now where like the county is being awarded these grants that are either being pushed out or not being used in a timely manner, and then like. Or, or like for instance, the the uh, legislation that just passed at the state level, like well, well now anybody can apply for two and a half million dollars over the next year. So we, uh, I think it's a little bit of a mix. And, and I kind of want to pull mine back to a mix too, only because the financial assistance piece, only because I'm thinking about other organizations um, like uh, CAC, etc. But in addition to that, especially if we're talking about like populations who are feeling like they can't trust the government, but they need to have somewhere that they can go to get that sort of um, some money fight for them to get the money. Yeah, I like your reliable comment a lot because I, where do you go? And is it a place that's going to be there? And how do I access it? And do you have to do a champion yourself all the time? You know, every time an event happens, it's Angie against the world, right? I just want like a button. Like yeah. staples, like right. what is that button called? Easy button. Easy button. I have Easy one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so, but Maybe it doesn't need to be that easy, button. but it's just yeah. like. Uh, but if there were somebody out there, a group out there that had the expertise and knew how to get to the place where money would be available or knew how to help you qualify for the money, I don't know that that exists right now. The bill. Right. Almost, almost, almost like, like an assistance concierge. That yeah. was a. Um, Oh, next time here. But in 2016, that was a position that MHG and preservation created to help people leverage those credits. So, yeah. So it came in from the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, stormwater management. Government, government. Yeah. 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 So, not storm, so not, not stormwater storm management. management. Yeah. Was it flood management? Flood management. Flood 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 it's kind of the same thing. Uh, so different things. They're different. <laughs> <laughs> what I do. Uh, communication from leadership. Uh, no, really. I guess. So I think this is duplicative because like, we have community consensus here and this is unification. Is it duplicative? Yeah. yeah. ER ops training, flood, fire, earthquake, gas leak. Like uh, emergency training, like. Uh, well, we, we have a government agency that does yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they do do that, like first aid training, CPR training, you just have to set it up that they'll come and do that already. Certainty. Uh -huh. Certainty uh -huh. of what? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. The series? Talked a little bit before your comment, but the confidence, uh, comfort. I had one up there that was very similar to certainty, yeah. which is you need to understand, you, sh you should have an expectation of what's going to happen, which gives you that certainty. And I split mine up into public safety and business safety. So it's an admin future. Well, it's kind of a, a fundamental thing. That's why we're all here, we're concerned about health and city's future. There's kind of an angst. And then it's very hard to describe what that angst is about. It goes in a lot of different directions. So uh, that's something that, that's not something an organization can take care of. Or? Well, yes, it can. Yeah. Providing okay. certain services that will take away the anxiety, maybe. But who does that? And what? Well, that's, that's, I bet. Things like this come together. Does government have a role in that? I mean, uh, should government have a role in that? They should. All but they of them have a role. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's I would. Like global, I think it's global. Yeah. Everybody has a global stake. In so that. we'll put it here. I mean, do you think that government has a role in that? Okay, the reason I wrote that down, phase two, we're waiting. Oddly enough, the same time that we're supposed to get that announcement is a state panel. And there's been no information about how that's going to be handled. So it's just, it ratchets up the uncertainty every time there's like, ah, oh, we got to reschedule, or oh, we got to push this out, or oh, like, and it just goes back to communication from our leadership. Like, just tell us what's going on. I'm not saying specifically about these two, I'm just saying it. Clearly defined plan. Huh. I bet future or I think it's future. Yeah. Stability. <laughs> future. Clarity about the degree to which the flood mitigation plan will ensure safety. An aspect of that one you just put up. Yeah. Well, that's 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 yeah, I mean, that's. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, back on that. I think it's up for discussion. Yeah. Read that one more time. Clarity about the degree to which the flood mitigation plan will ensure safety. That's something that's that's that the government should be able to communicate. Yeah, with I think that's. Yeah. Isn't our government supposed to do the same? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we already have one thing on here about consensus. This is specific to this is specific to flooding. So you need a consensus approach. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, it's maybe it's hard to answer that given we don't have the clarity. You know, we don't know what's coming. I think you know, in two weeks we'll pull we'll that, right? So maybe that'll be so right now it's kind of like that. We don't really know. Could you read that one more time, Consensus on approach to play. Yeah. We'll do that. So Like, who else gets any say in that besides the government? Like, once the decision is made, is it well, going to be? such a simple question is, are they going to solve the problem, or are they going to patch it up? So we end up with continued flooding. I think. Or maybe you get a plan and you feel like it, again, that goes back to the degree to which. You know, is it going to take away... But I mean, so, so where should back on that? I, I guess the question for me comes down to the word consensus because that requires like a group of people coming together to make a decision, and it seems to me like the decision is the government's regardless. Even if it gets patched and it doesn't work, then it government. becomes a new. Decision. That's also true. So, so let's break this down. If you if you look at the economic development, the ECD, the clearly they have. A, uh, a vested interest in that. ECP has a vested interest in that. Yeah. Our government has a vested interest in that. However, each one of those is looking at it from a slightly different and they don't talk to filter, and they don't talk to each other. So I think you need one entity that would help build that consensus. It would be the government. Instead of consensus, I kind of think of it as widespread community support. Oh, is that a little less? But is there a forum out there that brings everybody together? Right. Right, right now we have camps, we have disagreement, we have a lot of vitriol. It seems to me it's government's been there, EDA's been there, ECP's been there, and we still have this lack of consensus. So to me, it feels to me more like the new entity would be a way to forge consensus and maybe have people put behind them how things were and think about how things can be. Mm -hmm. that's, that's okay. That's good. So basically buy into the whatever decision is. Yeah, but they're part of it because right. there's a board, hopefully the best of the world and others that are part of it. And they're, you know, it's not just a 
top-down discussion. It's, it's a bottom-up discussion. Right. And, and I was going to say, right now, what you have is, to your point of different camps, you have different camps who are all very entrenched, <laughs> I think, in the community, and trying to get them to come over to one side or another, even talk to the types of difficult words. If you have a new entity that's able to bring them all together with a clean slate, that's a possibility of working. So that's one of the resources of this Pelican City. We have lots of organizations and lots of constituencies out there that just need to pull them together. There are a lot of communities where you have a forum and three people show up. We're, we're fortunate. We just gotta figure out how to harness that. We have a system yet. And I'm you know, I'm to be a local organization to help facilitate that. Okay. An understanding of what needs to be done to protect Ellicott City from storm damage. Find that More collaboration with other communities outside the county. I think it's a new group. <coughs> but that actually is a new group. I think it's a new group. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because I think, if, if in fact, the reaching out is that the yeah. county is just looking at itself, I maybe mean, we need something that looks beyond itself, right? right? Yep. I must misunderstand what you offer that. But doesn't sometimes local government partner with other government to achieve regional outcomes. Yeah. 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 Well, that, that's a project. You know, that's coming together. First you need to go out and canvas what's Are we still holding that one? Yeah. Which one? The one that we're talking about? <laughs> I put it right here. Right? Oh, yeah. put, it, put it with those two on the like, bottom to the, please, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> a plan to help both businesses and community members meet rebuilding needs if they are not yet met. Yeah. You need metrics to measure appropriateness of all improvements. Gary, you want to explain? Yeah. We all saw the trap, Gary, with the yeah. paper. He said, like, um, it's like earlier there was a conversation about diversity. Yes. And there are all kinds of diversities. Yes. And I think those are all important to Ellicott City. We need a list somewhere. Every time we make a decision to do something, you test against these matrices. Maybe there's a dozen of them. I like that. And, you know, it's just a reminder. Oh, yeah, Ellicott City is about this. Ellicott City is authentic because of this. Blah, blah, whatever. I, I like that. I think that. that's something that needs to be done by the new group, you know. That, I like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, here. A statement to Howard County, Maryland, and the world of what the plan is going forward to. Oh, I already have that. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Move away from street centric perception of Elegant City. Main it's Street centric. Main Street, sorry. It's about history, environment, community. It's about the community and the watershed, not just businesses along Main Street. Put it in the new group category? Oh, yeah, the new category. It's, I'm trying to change the paradigm. We keep addressing, we keep falling back into the old about Main Street. No, it's bigger than Main Street. Main Street is impacted by this bowl that lives in. Um, you can't separate them. And it's enriched if you take the rest of the bowl and combine it with Main Street. I, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I think, I think it's good. Like, like, again, there's, there's a there's a very 
fractured set of groups that all identifies in different places. So you have you have people who are taking care of Mount Ida, but that doesn't translate to helping Main Street out. Um, and you have people that are taking care of the, the code school stored, but that doesn't translate back down to Main Street. And you have the communities at West. So it's it's very fractured, yeah, it's but it's all intertwined. This is so random, but you like mentioned the bowl, and then you said something about the fracture, and I'm seeing this event future of organization as sort of bowl being melted into the themes of the Kinsaburo. Well, it's kind of an issue, and which I'd like to see done and how to do it. Um, but, you know, it's just building on the comment that yes, there are organizations that have, you know, specific missions within Alaga City, you know, talk to each other. If there was a table and everybody came to that table, many times a, an organization entirely with different mission can help the other organization. They work together, they leverage, they can partnership. There are lots of those opportunities, but it's like we're all talking to ourselves. Um, I just see missed opportunities in trying to change that paradigm. Future on that. Future on that. Yeah. There's part of that that maybe governors will push that. <laughs> that this organization, I see this as a bridge to right. government. Right. Right. That's what's been missing yeah. in Alaga City all the years I've been here. It's okay. like there's this hole. Okay. There's no bridge. Okay. So we already have adequate housing. This says secured affordable housing. So is this duplicative or is this different? It's close. I think it's Duplicate? Okay. Is that affordability piece? It's like, yeah. Well, that's, I think, adequate housing. Yeah. We, we have adequate housing already. People are already living here, but we need adequate affordable housing, diverse housing. So it's this one says controlled growth, and this says responsible development that respects the unique situation. So, people, yeah. so which one do you want to put up? Responsible yeah, okay. That's a government role. I do too. Yeah, that's government. It is like government. Because you've got so many elements and stuff in that master plan. Yeah. I think the kicker is it also respects the unique. Yeah, that's. I'm going to stay back on that one for a second because I think that one of the things that we have currently with our system is that individual parcels can be developed by whoever who comes in with the plan, but it doesn't necessarily respect or tie in with the adjoining properties or community. So. Um, you know, several years ago we had that uh, floating easement that was approved that said that you could put in senior assisted housing anywhere, plop it down, which is great if you're a developer of affordable assisted housing, but it's not so great if you're the community living next to it. Um, so I don't know if that, I think, I, I don't know if it applies under government because you need somebody to come forward with that bigger, bigger objective. Objective, which is yeah, approach it comprehensively and holistically. With your checklist. So I, I would almost put it under future unmet, but or a combination of the two. Like it, would, it would be the future unmet advocating to the government to ensure that whatever development takes place meets those yeah. objectives. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. as you move through the process, supposedly there is that new organization, it doesn't mean that things don't evolve and change for the better. Right. You know, it may start there and they say, wait a minute, we're not good at this, you know, here, this is how I want you to manage this, come back to us or something, I don't know. Publicity. I think that's all of them. Yeah, yeah I would agree. Okay. Investors. EDA. EDA. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sorry, I mean to take it away, but um, <laughs> investors might be a group that the new entity is going to try to attract throughout the city. Businesses or like 
Well, just as investors. Investors to me are people who invest in things. They might be buying real estate, redeveloping real estate. I mean, EPA has a role there, definitely. But I also think the group is going to have a role. I think it's creating balance for organizations if they have, you know, that mission that's coincided with. I almost feel like because I kind of see it like this. If the Unmet Future Organization creates the at an atmosphere that's attractive to business, then EDA is going to have the ammunition that it needs to move forward. I almost see it like marketing and sales. Like in marketing, you, you get your collateral together, you get out there, you put the message out, but then your salesman goes in and closes the deal. So I kind of see it as that well, thing. It, it might be what happens again is you create that table, this comes up, and then you reach out to EDA and say, well, this is how you can help us. Right. But right now, they're just making it up because we're in telling you what's going to be effective. What's part of the strategy? Mm -hmm. And the, the real estate side of it, it right, using things like the courthouse as an example, the courthouse comes up for redevelopment. That's got to be part of a larger master plan, which is going to involve everybody in it, but then you're also going to need investors. So there's really got to be someone who's going to be orchestrating that long-term dance. And that will we'll interact with those actors. You know, someone who can interact has the language of finance and redevelopment and can work with those groups to get desired results that the community wants. So they're kind of far away on the sheet of paper. <laughs> but I guess that's another one that just says investors and we'll just put it in both places. Yep, sure. Okay. Expertise. <laughs> in one area, <laughs> so much generic words here. Investors, <laughs> expertise, so it, every everybody, right in the middle. Yeah. yeah, everybody. In organization to oversee revitalization. I would say on that. Funding for building improvements. I thought we had something like that. Yeah, okay. A plan for vacant properties. Oh. This is just put one on top of the other. <laughs> but there is no group out there that funds right now building improvements. No, I guess what I mean, the whole organization, right, so it's me and the other net. Well, I was going to figure out how it goes in the other net. Right. Yeah. So this one says easily accessible money. So again, we have grants and low interest loans here under government, and then we have financial assistance here under government and but on net. So is this that like easily it? one is a little <laughs> floated. <Yeah. There's> <laughs> I think it's a little of a duplication of those other two. Okay. Tiber Watershed Ombudsman. Well, I'd say I'm bad. But who would, so would, would an ombudsman be part of an unknown group or would Absolutely. it be? Yeah. Okay. So that's one of the characteristics that's to change. Right. I look at cities across the environment. That's, that's what the town's about. That's what the history is about. That's the whole purpose of an ombudsman is to be not. I was an ombudsman, so I know that. <laughs> It's a hard word to do. It's an advocate. That's why we had that job. If we had a bill cut about water, we wouldn't be here. It would be someplace else. Community retention. What's that? I wrote that. That I think I wrote that one. Community retention to keep our existing communities and the diversity of them. You know, we've got the West End. We've got there's a there's a large character difference between different neighborhoods. And it's, I, I don't think it's a segregation of neighborhoods, but it's definitely a characterization. As you move through the community, there's a transition from one to another um, uh, and a flow. And again, trying, wanting to retain that diversity versus watching swaths of it be taken away. It's one of those matrix things. As a consultant, I used to 
tell people you think it's the hardest thing in the world to get this thing started. Uh, everything is against you. I tell you the greatest danger is success. But if you're successful, none of you will be here because you won't be able to afford it. Right? You lose, you know, and you have to set those matrix up. <laughs> Right, right. So, right. It's kind of like when Jim Ross planned for we had the yeah. association already in place. Yes. Yeah. So. yeah. When I worked for a building developer in Colorado, one of the things we did was we would come into a brand new subdivision. You're talking you know, five, six hundred homes mm -hmm. total, but you planned it out to where it wasn't all of one individual economic strata. Absolutely. And so there was a flow throughout the community which would allow that community to thrive with a mixture of use. And I want to keep that. <laughs> so we should go, Charles. It's just like the aspect, you know, it's like it's like some of the baby boomers can you know, afford to live here, but their kids will never be able to afford to live here. I have conversations with younger people, and they, you know, their comment is, please save a space for me. I think it's under the new development. The new, it's the proof. It's a start. It's plan to address, so these are, these are similar. A plan to address challenges and clarity about who implements that plan and watchdog to ensure flood mitigation implementation is addressed appropriately in a timely manner. Okay, the watchdog piece takes it out of the government, doesn't it? Yeah. I think that's the ombudsman. Doesn't that kind of go with yeah. the ombudsman then? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> well, isn't the and ombudsman would, the new thing? Yes, it's in fact. <laughs> and I would say instead of saying, if, if, if the person who wrote it wouldn't mind, instead of saying a Tiber watershed um, ombudsman, just a watershed ombudsman. Someone who's looking out for all of it. Because the challenges faced by each one of those tributaries are pretty right. much the same. Make sure and the opportunity. Some of the solutions or the watershed for the flooding are going to need negotiation with the supply of the sector. I think those can be done in a very positive manner if you approach it as a strategy and you know in a timeline. Um, so I, again I, I think that's why it's the watershed and it's the holistic approach to this area. So are these two separate things? And if so, where do they go? So watchdog to ensure flood mitigation implementation is addressed appropriately and timely manner. And a plan to address challenges and clarity about who implements that plan. I think the start is under the new group. Because um, um, yeah. I, I don't have confidence in any other groups being able to do that. So both of them? Yep. Vitality. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's oh, really fun. Fun. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Community is infrastructure. But is it true to say that the places that exist, the EDA, the ECP, and or the thing we don't know anything about, what conveys vitality? <laughs> Do you feel like, is there vitality in the district right now? Do you feel that? Angie, right now, do you feel it? I feel so many something. things about this. <laughs> we don't have enough time to go into that. I, I, I think, you know what, frankly, when I stand inside Persigales, I do. When I drive down that street four times a day, drive my kids to school, I don't. So inside, but you know, not outside. That's a dangerous place to be because if that's my perception and I'm there and I am on the inside, mm -hmm. what does everybody else think? Because they don't get it exactly right. So what is it the everybody, do you think? The vitality thing? Is that something that hits every bucket? It's government, it's EDA, it's ACP? Absolutely. Because I mean, I think Ellicott City is a place that Howard County is proud of. You know, even on our worst day, we're a place that I think the citizens of Howard County are proud of and proud to be a part of. And I, 
and and I think it's because it's so many unique things. It's it's history, it's roots, it's um, and whether you grew up here or not, like it's that's something tactile that you can see and experience here. You know, it's social, it's fun, it's. I think it belongs to everyone. I think it's a community that belongs to everybody, and I think that's why when we experience these things, like you know, you're like. When you're in it, you're in the center, but the, it's a ripple effect, and it's happening all across Howard County. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think it just goes back to you know anybody that touches this place. I think you know, it goes part of the vitality because it requires. Yes, this place needs to be celebrated continuously, and there's a particular skill set for doing that. And we have to find out that skill set who does that well. It's not the well-meaning stuff. It's, it goes beyond, I, I, I think there are agencies that know how to do that. But it has to be done at the right time and the right focus, whatever. Well, I've heard champion. You know, I, I I just, can't, yeah, the champion, someone that's just every day in every way, right there for Arlington City, you know, and, and, and the county, and the region beyond the county. But just always putting the best foot forward, trying to always make this like work. Uh, Mayor Schaefer, uh, Jim Rouse, you know. Just, just so I don't want to date myself, but you know, put the babies. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, did I did in high school. I did in high school a lot of you know, But put the baby suit on, you jump in the Patapsco River, you know, as Mayor Schaefer did so famously in the aquarium back in the seventies. And it just arrests everybody. It gets everybody's attention. Like wow. Yeah, we got so a lot of money. Money. So does Vitality stay in the middle? I'm on, new, I'm on a new thing, a new group. It'll start there. I don't know who will end up with it, but I did. I'll put it in. Put it in on Matt? Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be, it, it goes back to that consensus builder getting all those parties all to bond into the common vision. Exactly. Yeah. And it honestly sounds like a marketing piece, too. It's sort of that. Right. When we come down to it, if we end up going someplace and it's just a mad entity, and there's a tendency to think about it as an organization, and I, I think it's going to be a bad money an organization that is going to be very slim and mean. Um, it's going to come down to a, a director, personality, to do this. It's not a regular job, and it requires a right. very, very special. All right, we just have a few more to go. Um, community infrastructure. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Infrastructure already. Yeah. 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 So we have better infrastructure here. This says community infrastructure. Do you have, is, is there one of those that says utility infrastructure? Because that looks like my handwriting. From here. Utility infrastructure, I pulled okay, as duplicative good. to better and Got community. Okay, yeah. Cool. And I'm going to read through the ones that I pulled as duplicative to make sure that everyone agrees. So is this duplicative, community yeah. infrastructure? Yes. Well, or is it building the community, building community as opposed to sewer lines and water lines? And I, the community, that I was looking at the community infrastructure as as um, like pulling the different groups to get Charles' yes. point. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, again, I think that one's blind, actually, you're holding it. <laughs> what I was talking about is more the social aspect, not the okay. physical aspect. Right. You should. I should. <laughs> this one says business interests. We said that already. Just Central clearing house for the business community. No, that's the partnership. That's the partnership. All right. Funding to start or expand businesses. I think it starts with a new group. Funding to start or expand businesses. Yeah, that's that's that sounds like EDA's mission statement. Yeah. That's really taking that. Exactly. Resources at state and local level. Resources at a state and local level. What kind of resources? Attractive resources? What I mean by that, <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, I, I sort of meant yeah. some, somebody that can kind of organize, coordinate resources at state and local level. So somebody um, that, an entity that, 
there's a need in my mind that someone needs to coordinate those resources. That's what I think. Those are as well as I, I think that's the unknown. Money for merchant co-op advertising. Well, yeah, that could be the EDB, the EDA, or the ECB. Yeah. Funding for property restoration to preserve the character of Main Street. Yeah. I'm unknown. I mean, right now you can get some tax credits, but it's not really that. That's it's not really funding per se. We need a vision, plan, slash strategy. An organization to manage and implement the plan. I think this is duplicative, right? Talk about this already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so I'm going to go this process. <laughs> okay. Better development of the stories of diversity, says Brooke, and better connection to the Patapsco. I didn't write that. No, your name is on that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you signed it. 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 You I don't know what you were talking about last time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about like your like, brother's abolitionist and all these right. others. So there's so many layers. Right. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> I think that could go to the Howard County Historical Society. Sean Glad would be all over that. Like white on this. I'll just put that right here. Okay. <laughs> I hope you're watching, Sean. <laughs> you press the envelope. Coordinated plan for promoting town as a whole on a consistent basis. And then I don't know what this word is. Whatever it is, it goes under that. Coordinated town to town. That sounds like marketing. Of the town. A something with a with a something something of events posted at the beginning of the year. You're like ECP. ECP. Oh. ECP. So here are the ones that I pulled down as duplicative. Blood mitigation projects to reduce impact of runoff. Mm -hmm. Long-term development vision. Stability. Secured affordable housing. Better utilization of our historic sites. Utility infrastructure. <laughs> more visitors, more spending by visitors. Reassurance that changes will be made to ensure another flood will not occur with the same damaging impact. Is that what you look at? Really? I'm just not even trying to look at the Mike says government. I'd say government. If it's not the place, yeah. Um, build and maintain community consensus and parking. That's it. Okay. So the answer is yes. So we want to write this up and go ahead, Gary. Um, okay. There's been a close question. Uh, to the committee. I know Nathan in the first meeting and Angie and today and Mike, I think you said um, you have concerns about the city's future. Lots of different concerns. Is everybody else to some degree somewhat concerned about the city's future? You mean as a the existence of the quality of it or both? Yes. Yeah. Quality of both. Right. <laughs> talk about talk about to yourselves. I felt like that's what he was gonna say. Put Oh. Okay. So do we have concerns about the future of Elegant City? I'm just concerned about the. I I say yes because I'll be quite frank. I'm down in the area a lot. I don't 
get the opportunity to like get that in my role, but we look through a lot. And to Angie's point, like when I go through it, it breaks my heart. Like I, I physically feel it. Um, and I wonder what it's going to take. Yeah, I don't think it is specific. I just want to make sure because we're talking about making recommendations. You know, the, the, the variety of different particular concerns. Eric, Eric I'd like yeah. to say to, that blight can become contagious. And when I see that, I see that as blight. And I see that as uh, this is not, this is, it doesn't take a lot for things to go south. And I think because we're in such a strong economic place that it's been able to buffer it for so long, but I feel like it's not going to hold for, forever. Now, I was so encouraged. Last Saturday night, my husband and I walked around and looked, looked up, this is what he likes to do, is look, look at stormwater infrastructure. It sounds so really <laughs> exciting, but we were looking, you know, looking at, at you know, walking along Main Street, seeing where the plan, like how things are gonna look. And it was great because Lapa Lapos was hopping. We were, I mean, it was great. Um, every You couldn't get into the Phoenix, it was so packed. Um, we walked up every bar we went to, it was super crowded. And for 40 somethings, that's annoying. But yet, you know, we couldn't find a place at the bar. You know, so it was just for our four hours of alone time, we spent one hour just trying to find a place to get a beer because it was so crowded. And even with half Main Street offline, we still had coming out looking for looking for a good time and hopefully that'll last forever but but we know it won't so I was also Carrie, I'd ask what were the ages because when we talk about that again I always think 10 15 years ahead where are the Millennials are they there I don't know I'm just asking because whatever we do this has got to be long-range and if we're not attracting the demographics that's coming in here, yeah. the millennials, and that's yeah. where I've got to look at, where we all have to look at. That's the elephant outside the door. And if we're not doing anything, in my opinion, to attract them, keep that vitality, change the whole mindset of their wanting to visit Ellicott City, historically, from that standpoint, recreationally, um, socially, however you put it in that category, we may not, it may not be, it'll be there, but it won't be vibrant. So That's what I'm, it's one of the major issues, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I want to help address that with Simon, because Simon and I ran into each other at the restaurant there. Going out the patio, you just closed down a wedding, you all of a sudden didn't rent it out for a wedding. I'm guessing the wedding meant probably millennial and age wedding, otherwise it wasn't. Um, but when we sat down there and watched the restaurant patio fill in, there was no age range. It was, it was everything, it was all over the place. If you sit outside uh, and watch people come in to pure wine or in the group pub, or just walk up and down Main Street, there is no age range, it specifically. It seems to be all over the map, which is what we want, because then we're not uh, pandering to one individual. Um, Jackson Ed with the, the, that new store. Yeah. Off the hook, millennial. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I have a scotch with your, uh, your right. uh, you know, I agree. That's now. Right. And I understand it, don't get me wrong. It's still, looking down the road 2029 absolutely and that's part what of that, i'm thinking so part of that is that that future vision that, that yeah. the ecp has already started working on that the economic development corporation they're trying to help it's giving that that blend of entertainment businesses that will continue down that which is diversity if we keep it diversified then we keep the keep well, going in diversified. that too plus when we look at the affordable housing or the type of housing right you've got you look at route one they've got residential up top commercial down the bottom uh, 
all that's part of that maybe plan, as yeah. you said, Barry, that matrix in there. How do we keep Ellicott City as a whole uptown or as well as downtown, so to speak? That's going to be that viability that's 2020. That's vitality. Yeah, that vitality. Well, and yeah. I, I also, again, I'm always trying to make it much more comprehensive. Um, thinking on the economics of it, vitality wants to be about the environment because we're moving into a time of environmental change. And I love Ellicott City to be an example, a positive example. Of that kind of setting, and I think you'll attract people mm -hmm. on that also. Yes, they, you know, they want to have a latte or a beer or something, but there are other things. And, should be that and the key point, again, back to the environment, millennials are looking at the environment yeah. more so than we are. Yeah. And they're more environmentally conscious now than, than we are as boomers and, and whatever, so. Just throw that out there. What is the generation after a millennial? What are my kids? What's up? So they're in the What? What are your kids? What are your kids? And so, we don't Y or Z, something like that. Yeah, to be German. Yeah. So, so I'm like more in tune with stormwater drains than any people I know. Right? Um, and to put in a shameless plug, um, since we brought up the environment and Ellicott City all in one bill um, our organization, Howard Eagle Works, is getting ready to have a really big event called Ellicott City Soak It Up at St. Peter's on May the 18th. And it's it's educational, it's going to be fun, I'm going to be DJing, yeah. we're going to be burning biochar, we're going to be doing, it's going to be a big class. So, we can have to that too? Absolutely. Okay. Maybe I should just send a little something around. Yeah. Okay. 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 We'll do. For sure. Uh, I'm going to steal the word from you, Angie. Tactile. Which you, you used earlier, and it, I, I wrote it down because it, it hit me. One of the things that keeps people coming here, what it brought my wife and I back here long ago because we had come up and spent an afternoon once here. We were like, wow, this is incredible. Had lunch at Main Street Blues, and, and then did a loop back around the country, and when we moved back to Maryland for a job, they said, where do you want to live? And we said, Ellicott City. And that's, we literally put a pen in the map and said, that's where we want to go. And it was because of the tactile nature of the place. Not only physically, it is the physical nature that, of, of everything that's here, but also the, the real sense of community. That, I mean, I remember back when we were here in the early 90s and you sat down at the sandwich shop and you're sitting there and you notice that it's not just tourists coming in and out. The person behind the counter is greeting someone that they see clearly on a daily or almost daily basis. Um, and that's part of the tactile nature of this place that needs to be safe, right? And to a conversation that you and I had a few weeks ago and also to Carrie's point, with regard to the flight, the whole notion of us being able to make a decision that fosters a rapid turnaround and development of economic support and community support and historical and environmental support for the community not only has the potential to revitalize and communicate the community and, and restore it, but to take it to a place that it's never been before. So that it, it, even though it's historical, it also becomes something futuristic and great for the future that's better than it's ever been. So tonight, we did something I think really important. We helped categorize among the different buckets of entities that are out there who plays the best role to handle certain things. Maybe, Shane, next week, we could come back or circulate prior to the meeting a summary with what what ended up in my bucket. So thank you for facilitating that. That was, that was great. very enlightening. Yeah. And maybe as a suggestion, I'd like to just, we don't have many minutes left, and I'm not going to hold this at 8.30. I just want to be cognizant of everybody's time. I mean, I'm very appreciative of the time everybody's put into this, but is next week the time that we sort of look at this and dissect whether an entity is needed or not? 
they kind of feel like we're there. Yeah. I don't know what additional information. Where do we go from there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, uh, what does Frederick call there? Yeah. 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 yeah, I think we're awfully close. But we need to just reflect, I think, look at Mike, the way it's coming. Is, is Frederick, is the King no. study of Frederick going to come? No. They're, they're not a CDC. They're, they're not, a CDC. not a CDC. It's a government. Well, it's a I would use Frederick. Just the opposite, though. They are familiar with the redevelopment of Frederick several decades along. I remember when Frederick came to Ellicott City because they wanted to see the success story. Um, they had flooding issues. They hit the board and they solved it. Uh, ask him if it's worth it. I think they're somebody who's worth hearing from. Yes, they're not a CDC. I'm, I'm not focused on the CDC period. I just I see issues and opportunities. How did they do it? Yes, but to say, how did they as a government manage to pull that off? The government didn't. The private sector got together as a committee, and they, they developed a strategy. It's an interesting story, um, and it's worth hearing. Well, do we want to take time to hear it, or are we ready to make some decisions? I think that's my question. Shane, I don't know how much time the county exec is willing to give us to uh, reach out more broadly, uh, but that would be another night of just discussion. Getting a Frederick perspective, um, I think it would be helpful to understand how they did it, certainly, but I don't know that it's really going to, after given what we've just done tonight, it feels like there's a pretty clear consensus that there's something more than what we have that we need. I completely agree with that. The question is, is do we feel that we're armed with enough information to figure out what that would be. And could, could it be something where maybe we bring somebody in like through Skype or the person doesn't actually have to come here? It could be more of like a ha like 15 minutes, a half an hour. It doesn't have to be a big formal presentation. It could be a, a portion of the meeting. And I think having this conversation, we should come prepared to ask very specific questions about how things were executed and how you operationalize this. And like you said, is the investment worth it? I personally want to know, if you're if they invest $100 million, you know, how did you leverage that? You know, what, what more, what did it bring you? Um, so Part that, of their story is they created a spreadsheet of alternatives and how they were going to address the issue of flooding and the redevelopment of downtown. And at the bottom of that spreadsheet was the most expensive solution get $2 million, they pay for it, it's $70, and ask them to do it. Yeah. And they're still doing it. I mean, the process is still going on. Yeah. It's, it's still building the trenches. And, and well, so your still, it just keeps expanding here. Well, it never goes like away. Hour and if, and we uh, can't, if we can't get them for next week, oh. um, and I don't know, can we get them here for next week, Shane? I'll have to reach out. Yeah, why don't we reach out, see what we can find out, let everybody know and we'll see if that's feasible to get them here. Was this our week of attendance? I know we have several people missing here with the yes. attendance clash. I don't know. Next week is spring break from high schools. Um, I'll be gone. I'll be gone. I'll be gone the following week, but that's really, I mean, I can, what, if we have a plan for only next week, I can always send it call Yeah. Well, uh, Frederick is a very firm path. But I'm happy to try and get somebody here next week that's going to push our process into um, May, uh, probably May, uh, because we'll probably have a couple nights of just discussion to go, just on the Brian, Brian, we need one of what we have, and then well, what is it that we want to do? Right. Right. How is it structured? I mean, there could be pretty lengthy discussions about that. So we can educate more or we can just move forward. And I'm happy to explore and educate more, but if we can't get them for next week, that's going to push this process out by weeks. And I think the fact that we're not keeping the membership here, um, it's dwindling a little bit. I snow school this evening. Uh, it's beautiful from right outside. People have a lot of other things with their time. I, I fear that we start losing you know, our, our will, our body here a little bit. So be careful about asking for a lot more because I don't want to lose other people you know, in trying to get through this as quickly as we can. So let's
let's do this. Let's we'll reach out for Frederick. We'll see what we can learn and be prepared next week to, uh, to read a summary of what we've done tonight and come prepared to discuss that summary and, and agree on it. And He's going to look to Richard and it doesn't have to consume Watch. the entire time. No. You know, it was. Yeah. Yeah. My people question want is, to go on, but, but if he can't make next Wednesday night, right. that's pretty close. Yeah. I don't know. That pushes yeah. us out two weeks from tonight, sure. and then that week I'm hearing is a conflict week for folks, and that pushes out three weeks, and then that defers every. Why week. would he push it out three weeks? It will be in June, so I just want to be careful. With this. Okay. Anything else? Okay, thank you, everybody. And then see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.